So, hi seventh graders. I am going to be showing you now how to make your pinch pots and how to join them for the project that we're going to make. So, my hands are all covered with clay because I've been getting this ready. Um, what you should find in bag number one are two cubes of clay about the same size. You're going to take that cube of clay, don't don't fold it or anything too much, and you're just going to tap it on your mat to kind of get it into a better cube so that it's pretty much square on all sides. Shouldn't take too much. Once you have that that way, you're just going to pat the edges off to make it into a sphere. Kind of pat the corners. doesn't have to be a perfect sphere, it just needs to be kind of rounded. And you can roll it around a little bit if that helps you get it shaped up. So you should have, when you have that done, two of them, um, we're going to make two pinch pots. Now I've already made one. Here's what we're trying to do. Now if you'll notice, mine is like a half circle. It does not have a flat bottom. That's because I'm holding it in my hand as I work the clay. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. But I've got this one ready so I can then show you how I'm going to put them together. A second, I'm getting some supplies ready. All right. So, we're gonna take our thumb and push down into the middle of our sphere, but not all the way through. And then, it's not a pinching like this, like you were pinching someone. It's pinching against your four, uh, your three or four fingers. You can see where my fingers look brighter, red, pinkish. That is where I've been touching the clay, and that's how I'm touching it. And you're going to pinch your way around. Now, I'm pinching down towards the bottom of this, not up at the top. It's very important that you don't pinch this edge thin. It needs to be uh, at least a quarter of an inch thick all the way around so that you can join these two together. So as you're pinching and turning, your thumb goes down into the inside, but I'm not pinching up here. The clay will just sort of work its way up there. And what you're trying to do is kind of make it all pretty much the same thing thickness. And I can do it with either hand, but notice I'm not doing it this way because I don't want it to get flat on the bottom. I'm going to hold it in my hand and just lightly, gradually pinch it to get it to be a nice half a sphere. So it should look like half an orange or half a baseball. Then you can kind of tap it down on the mat so that it flattens that edge. So now I should have two and what we want is for them to be close to the same size so that when I put them together, so this side seems to be a little bit smaller so I'm just going to go and kind of pinch it a little more just stretching it out there. Don't get too just take your time with this so that you have a nice pinched pot. I'll well, see if they're closer to being the same size. That's, that's pretty good. They're pretty close. Okay, so I'm going to set them down this way. And now I'm going to use my fork. I'm not going to eat it. I'm just going to use my fork and I'm going to what we call score the edges of my pinch pot. Because you could make something just out of this, but we're going to put the two together so we have a hollow form. So I take that fork and really rough the edge there, just on the flat part of it where I laid it on the table. Same here. Rough that up. We have little tools for this at school, but actually not having enough to share the classes using the fork or using the forks too. 
but you can use anything that will rough up that edge. Okay, so now in a little container in your bag, it's marked slip, you have some clay that's really soft and gooey. Remember we said that slip was like the glue for things. So we're going to take some of that soft, gluey, gooey clay, and I'm going to fill around the edge where it's roughed up. This is going to make a good surface to join these two pieces together. And we're going to do that on both. Don't get too much on it, just kind of fill it. You can wipe off if you get extra out here on the edge. And you want that slip to really go down into those little creek cracks that you've made in the edge, the rough part. Because they're going to grip this thing so it will stay together. Okay, so I've got that on there pretty good. I'm going to go rinse my hands off. If you don't like how the clay feels when you put that slip on, you could use one of the popsicle sticks or a craft stick to smear it on there. Some people don't like that feeling tactilely. Okay, so I'm going to push these two things together. Now, when I say push, I'm going to do it gently to try to make the edges kind of meet. little slip may goosh out there a little bit, but it's all good. Now, we have a little seam around there, but I don't want that seam to show. So I'm going to take a craft stick that I've used already today. You can wash them off and reuse them again. And I'm really going to merge the clay. Notice that I'm really digging it up there and bringing it across that seam. If you don't, it's likely to pop open. So you want to physically move that clay and mix it together. We can go back and smooth it out then. Be kind of gentle with it, like don't dig way down or you'll have dents in your, in your sphere that we're making. But we wanna really join it to get rid of that seam. Now, if it seems still showing or if you make a really big dent in it, you may need to make a little coil and fill it in, but hopefully our clay is pretty soft right now, so that's good. It's easier to work it around that. And it should allow you to really blend it across that seam. You can go back and smooth it out. And now we have a sphere that's hollow. Now, what do I turn it into? Well, you can do some searching to uh, get some ideas on uh, Google. You can look at pinch pots, pinch pot, uh, double pinch pots, pinch pot, pot creatures. I think for my purposes of showing you what I'm going to do, I'm gonna turn mine into a fish. Now, if this is going to be something that isn't, I'm gonna make my fish have a mouth, I think. But if this fish is going to be solid, um, hollow inside, because air will explode in the kiln, say he's going to sit like this on the ground, I have to put a hole. Make sure you're done with smoothing your clay out before you start this. So I have to have a hole for the air to, to come out of it. So I'm going to go in with that little skewer and just kind of turn it and make a little hole. You'll notice in the store if you go to buy a little something made out of china clay or whatever, it will have a little hole in the bottom and that's so 
the air can escape during firing. So make it fairly good sized like that because you don't, you have to be careful later and not fill it with glaze. Okay, so I have my little pinch pot. I have a hole in the bottom. Um, you're, uh, you know, you can cut a hole. You may want a plastic knife for this, and I'm sorry I didn't have any plastic knives, but if you have some at home, you can go in with your, you can cut like a mouth into this and turn it into some kind of a monster. Could open that mouth up a little bit. I could cut it out all the way around. Make it come out. We'll just make it like a fishy mouth right now. Okay. And I'm gonna put some eyeballs and a fin. I would probably do a lot of texturing to this fish. Now, the nice thing about opening that up, look inside there, I can see my seam in there. And I can go in there and smooth that out and really make sure that it's joined. So that if you open it up, if you make a big hole in it, that's a good thing to go in and do. Is kind of go in there and with your fingers or your craft sticks, kind of smooth that out. Okay, so I have some extra clay over here and I did give you some extra clay in bag two. I'm just going to use a small piece here to show you how to make an attachment. So let's say, you know, I'd probably put some fins on the side sticking out. I want a fin up here and maybe some eyes. So for the eyes, I could let's pinch off some clay here and roll it into a ball. Let's see if I can get two that are close to the same size. Yeah, not too bad. Maybe I want to put eyes like this on it. So now I'm going to go under that eye where I want it to be, and I have to score it. Remember, you score it on both pieces. You can also do this with your little your little stick that I gave you, your little skewer. You can go in where that's going to go and make some marks. Make some marks on your on your eye. Little slip. That fills them in and lets them grab together. So you push that on. Now, what I would do to make sure that it stays is take one of your, maybe one of your little popsicle sticks, I don't have one handy, and kind of merge that eye into my fish body. Really join it. I need my little popsicle stick, but really join it so that it will stay on there, that it becomes part of the body of the fish. Okay, so I would attach this other one the same way. Slip it, score it, score it, then slip it. Fill it in, the slip, push it on, and it really, it should stay that way, but probably better if you do a little merging of it, just to make sure that it's actually going to stay on there. Now, if I want to make these eyes kind of interesting in sculpture, they do an interesting thing with eyes um, because you don't really have any way to make that pupil dark or whatever. But you can take this and put a hole in it, and then you have kind of a neat little dark pupil. You can paint in there later if you want to, whatever. Okay, so let's say I wanted a, a fin on top. I'm gonna take some clay and kind of pat it out here. And I could use my fork or I could use this tool to press the designs into it. turn it over and make some designs on the other side. This is going to go on the top of my fish, but I could do some on the sides too. Okay. Now I don't want it to be too thin because I need to be able to attach it. I'm going to use this to kind of cut it off a little bit. And 
and check it here to see. And there's what it's going to look like. So again, you can always support your support underneath it. I got my hand in there while I'm pressing on it. So in order to get it to stay permanently, I've got to score it and slip it. I'll just kind of do that down the middle here. Scoring and slipping it assures that your pieces will stay together. If you just push them on there, there's a good chance that they will fall apart during the firing. Okay, so I'm going to lay that on. Let it kind of stick out there. Put my hand underneath. And I'll go in there again with a stick. Kind of really join it. Now I may have to touch up where I use the fork to make texture. I think your little popsicle sticks will probably work better for this. And there's, I think I threw several in there for you, so. Okay. Now in the process of that, I've kind of messed up my texture. So I'm going to go in there and kind of add that again. And that's that. So I could do all kinds of attachments. Now, I will say that if you make something you want to attach and it's very skinny, let's say I may, I roll some clay like this into a coil and I want to put this on, chances are that that's not going to hold very well. It's going to be very brittle and apt to break. So if instead, if you just kind of roll one end of the coil a little bit, but keep the other end where you're going to attach it thicker, like give it a little base to attach it with. Um, then slip and score and actually, you know, put it on there and then mold it on. That will likely stay better. But if you try to attach a very small um, piece like that, it's likely it won't stay on. And it might be hard for you to, since you have to get it back to me to fire it, it might not make it in transportation. So you can add as many things as you want to to this. You can design it how you want to. I'd like to see you add maybe some texture. Think about what you could do with the tools you have. For my fish, I could add some, uh, yeah. What are they called? The, uh, yeah, I can't say what they're called. Anyway, you could add texture for the, um, they're not the fins. Aiden, what are they called on the fish? The little things on the sides. Scales? No, the, the text, the little. Scales? Scales. Scales, they're scales. Okay. So once you have this all together, now as you are working on it, make sure you're keeping it in a plastic bag because chances are you are not going to finish it today. So make sure that you are putting it in a bag and zip locking it tight shut because if you don't, it will dry out and you won't be able to add more, more uh, details to it. I could put a tail on, whatever I wanted to do there. So make sure that it is safely in a bag and zip locked but our clay is pretty wet, so it should be okay um, to store that way. And like I said, you do not have to finish this today. I'm planning that you probably will finish it um, Thursday. Is it Thursday? No, Friday in your next class period. So that's what you should work on today. And actually, it may need to set up a little bit before you add too many details to it. So that's all I got. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know, and I'll see you later. Bye.